Thank you very much, Vaughan. Listen, man. whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Don't thank me. Thank Channel 4. All right. Channel 4. They said, here's a film crew, go and hang out with friends. And that is what we're doing. Oh, Unbelievable. Nice oh, hang on a second. Sorry about this. Hang on. Cheers. Hello. Hello. Dan. Yes, nice. Ah. OK, no, fine. I've got to go, got to go. Thank you very much. Give me that. I'm afraid you have to return all the drinks. There's been a dreadful mistake. These are the Fountain Studios in the shadow of the famous Wembley Stadium. They're a pretty anonymous, almost drab-looking selection of buildings, but I tell you what, they've boasted prestigious productions such as Ready Steady Cook, Bug Alert, and even <laughs> the Chuckle Brothers. But today, these studios are about to be put very firmly on the comedy map. For the first time ever, they're filming an episode of Friends outside America, and they've chosen these very studios in which to do it. Very exciting. I've only got one day on set with the cast, so if I want to make friends, there's going to be a lot of <laughs> sucking up. Gifts, whatever it takes. We're talking an all-star British episode. Even Fergie's got in on the action. So I hear you're single now. All this fuss over six 20-somethings living in New York. And you know, Mon, if things work out between you and Richard's son, you'll be able to tell your kids that you slept with their grandfather. <laughs> And judge all you want to, but married a lesbian, left a man at the altar, fell in love with a gay ice dancer, threw a girl's wooden leg in the fire, live in a box. So here we are on the UK set of Friends. You can see there's four 35 millimeter cameras. Now that's going to cost them a few quid. You certainly don't get that on your British sitcom. Have a quick look, just so I've done it. Oh, very good shot, very good shot indeed. Just going to weave through here. Keep following me, camera. But if we look down here, there's actually evidence of actually where the friends have recently been. Look, we can observe, a bit like Lloyd Grossman, but we can observe actual imprints, probably of friendly buttocks. Who knows who they could be, but certainly they've been sitting here quite recently filming. Um, so hey, tremendously... Sorry? Well, what do you think you're doing? I, I, huh? I, I was just... I was looking for the lavatories. Well, get out of here! OK, this is my dressing room. We're in a bit of a heavy situation here. What's happened? We're downstairs. What if monkeying around? What if we're falling about? And I was told to come and wait up here. They don't want me just buzzing around the place. So we've got to wait here until they call us. It takes a week to record a single episode of the cast are on set 16 hours a day. There's Jennifer Aniston, lovely hair. There's Kevin S. Bright, El Directore. And lo, Matt LeBlanc and Matt Perry, obviously having a friendly moment between scenes. Are you like your character? No. How are you enjoying England? Terrible. It's gone. What question do you hate being asked the most? It's a shocker. Jennifer, tell us about your hair. Red card. This episode is so top secret, we're not even allowed to look at some of the sets. Although I do know that this is the one where Ross gets married. Sorry. What? Johnny, uh, Matthew Perry's ready for you now. OK, just, uh, Matthew Perry? Yeah. Oh, God, King Wisecrack, here we go. Hey, anybody know a good tailor? You need some clothes altered? No, no, I'm just looking for a man to draw on me with chalk. <laughs> what are you doing here? It's OK, they've let me out of the room. It's... Well, I was, OK, I was promised, it's in my contract that I don't have to speak to you. And did you get the memo about uh, eye contact with me? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so just, if I establish eye contact, then you're fine. That's OK. There you go, see, there, okay, see, that's, that's not allowed. That's, OK, OK. See, but if I, hey, man, and that's now all right. we can talk. OK. Yeah. So, friends, four series, about 100 episodes. In a nutshell, for anyone who hasn't seen it, what's happened? Um, you want me to surmise 97 episodes? 
Well, we drink a lot of coffee, and uh, <clears throat> we say funny things to each other. And, uh, and uh, thanks, man. Anything else? Not Can you just give me about five more of these? Yeah. Nice. See, that's funny, and now I have a mouthful of food. You will never guess who's coming to New York. Mm. Quick, Phoebe, tell us before you can swallow. Can you guys, like, cut away for a moment? I'll swallow this, and then we'll come right back. Mm -mm. <laughs> That'll teach you to lick my muffin. <laughs> so, um, most shows like Taxi and, and, and uh, great show, and Cheers and all these great shows were about people that had made their choices in life and were kind of stuck with them. And the initial idea for Friends was to see a group who was just about to make those choices and see, you know, their kind of transition into... Um, what that leads, where that leads them. And so that was the initial idea, and we're kind of hoping to be still doing that in a funny way. Okay, is the end game the fact that all of you in the end will get married, actually? Is that what they've really got in band? It's going to end know. up as like. I, you know what, to tell you the truth, we don't know. Each other. We're not quite sure the end of this episode that we're shooting now. That's how far ahead they look. They keep you in the dark, though. Well, they're in the dark. You know, they're just barely, they're about three episodes ahead. I mean, I'm sure there's a general arc that they're going for, you know. Do you um, get conspiracy theories within the cast about the men who are really in control? About the men who are in control? No, the men who are, or the people who are really in control of it. No, it of? really is a sickeningly likable group. Everybody really likes each other a lot. That's not made up, and it's, it's kind of gross, but we really, there isn't a jerk, you know, in the group, you know. And if one comes along, we, like, lock them in a room. Okay. <laughs> he's being nice, and in, in taking about three hammer. seconds, he's just going to start nailing me. Oh, just no, no. Start. You know, I have quite a lot of one-liners and things cascading around my mind sure. all the time, and sure. I'm having real trouble policing them. And I, I, I sort of sense that in you, there's lines going round and round, just dying to come out. How, yeah. how do you... <laughs> if you knew what that looked like, you wouldn't do that anymore. OK. I think. But, OK. You know. I take, I'm taking this on board, all of this. Yeah, we'll talk, we'll, we'll talk after the show. Okay, we'll have a proper workshop. No, but actually the one-liner thing used to get me in a lot of trouble, obviously, in school, because mm -hmm. I would, you know, if I thought of something, then I would say it. And a lot of teachers said to me back then that I'll never amount to anything if I just say these things and that come to mind and if I'm sarcastic. And I'd like to just, you know, go up to them now and just go, <laughs> I did all right. I got her machine. Her answer machine? No, interestingly enough, her leaf blower picked up. <laughs> But, I, you know, I don't come up with all of those little Chandler one-liners. But you are the only, I, I gather, the only member of the Friends cast that's allowed to go in the writer's sessions. I am the only member of the Friends cast that has been in writer's sessions, but I, I don't think, I think anybody, if, if, they, if they wanted to, could just show up. But I, 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 the writer's room is just such a fun place to go, mm. and so I've asked if I could go in a couple of times. I've been in there about ten times, and, because it's just great. It's a room full of people that are paid to just make each other laugh all day long. So, so. for you, it's like just going down the gym. <laughs> it's the humor gym. It's going down to the humor gym. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I love your what I call the, the, it's your comedy flex. It's good. You can tell when I really love a yeah, line. Cause you do the flex. Yeah, because you do the flex. You sort of go. Here we go. Can. It's like really you, know, you can wind up. Yeah. Sometimes you can actually see just. Yeah. Like, yeah. But I can really see you with kind of your own friends how you get like when it's that sort of thing of this is going to be good. Yeah. He's put his foot right in it yeah. here. Everybody We've else say the... your things, but here comes mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, don't you see how gross that is? I mean, that's like you're using my toothbrush. You used my toothbrush. Oh, uh, that was only because I used the red one to unclog the drain. <laughs> Mine is the red one. Oh, God. Can open worms everywhere. One of the, my favorite parts of the show is when Joey says something stupid and I just completely nail him. Yeah. And he was trying to figure out the date that something happened one time. And he was like, no, it was two years ago. I think it was three years ago, and then he went, wait, when was 1995? <laughs> that was his line. And I just turned to him and I said, you have to stop the Q-tip when there's resistance. I think that I was my favorite, my favorite line. So the, the dynamic between the... I bet you flexed before that. Oh, uh, yeah, that was, yeah, really... Full flex. People see it coming. Fantastic. People see it coming, yeah. Thank you, mate. Thanks. <laughs> do you want to... Wanna... <laughs> Hog more of my screen time. He's loving it. Uh, uh, did he put black stuff on my head? <laughs> He really has done as well. Is that true? Yes. I wouldn't like you. Just let me know when his interview is coming. Yeah, okay. Can yeah, somebody yeah. come and fix me? Yeah. Because, you know, very important people watch this program. Yeah. This whole this thing is, is just going to be what be. a prima donna I am. Yeah, how much I need makeup, right? Let me put it there. Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Hi, Janice. Can you hold on for a second? Okay. 
Okay, what do I do? Shoot, I don't know. This is totally unprecedented. If we ever did what you did, a man would never call. Yep. Hello. Oh. Okay, you know what I said? I got it, I got it. Pretend that you just woke up, okay? That'll yeah. throw her off. Totally. Be sleepy. Yes, and grumpy. What do you... Stop naming dwarves! In the show, uh, Charles is always getting advice from the girls. Mm -hmm. In real life. <clears throat> do I get advice from women? I actually get a lot of advice from those three women. It's a very, it's a very bizarre thing because what we do, it's strange and I, and I'm, and it's great. But what we do is we, go, we're the six of us are down on stage, and we're rehearsing the show, we're talking about life, and, and and then basically we just go upstairs where our dressing rooms are and do a less funny version of it upstairs. It's the same kind of thing. It's just it's not written, so we're yeah. not we're not as funny. But because you're involved with them, though, there's actually, you actually trust them. Yeah, and you know you see them every day. I've yeah. seen them every day for four years. You know. And boy, I'm tired of them. Oh, God, this is great. The plane is gone, so I guess I'm stuck here with you guys. Hey, we all had better plans, okay? This was nobody's first choice. Oh, really? So why was I busting my ass to make this delicious Thanksgiving dinner? Now this feels like Thanksgiving. <laughs> Okay, look, I've heard you're a big fan of Barry Manilow, yeah? Oh, boy. Here is a signed album. <laughs> did he actually sign this? No, I did. Oh, you did. Great. Well, but it's a signed yeah. album. That's great. Can you name a song on this album? Um, I write the songs. Yes. There's Mandy. A... <laughs> I guess. Yeah, very good. You're... Could this be the magic? Could it be magic? Could it be yeah. magic? Copacabana? Did, did, did he write, I write the songs? Um... You what know what? That? I'm embarrassed to say that I know that, and no, he didn't. He didn't, did he? No. But, uh... Isn't that so ironic? It's very strange, isn't it? If you it? want irony, it's not an Alanis Morissette yeah. song. At that kind it's of right irony, there. you just have to get up and hug. Yeah. So let's do that, and then we'll, uh... Oh, Thanks, man. God. Thanks, man. Matt, Matt, Matt. I mean, if that's wrong, I don't want to be right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Thanks, I'll go if listen to this. Listen. Yeah, I'll go listen to this now. Barry Manilow, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, it's a good one, actually. It's good one. There's a scratch on track three. And it's a record. So, that's the. That's just because I was dancing. <laughs> it's just jobs. I understand. Thanks, just, man. Yeah, thanks. Take okay. care. Ah, the sights, the sounds, the thrills and spills of a real life set. Not that I was there to soak it up. I was, of course. Um, Courtney Cox is ready for you now. Courtney Cox? Yeah. Fantastic. OK. Monica Geller is the most neurotic of all the friends. She's obsessed with tidiness, cleanliness. So what I'm going to find out is if Courtney Cox shares some of that obsessiveness. Whose little ball of paper is this? Oh, that would be mine. See, uh, I wrote a note to myself, and then I realized I didn't need the note, so I balled it up, and now I wish I was dead. <laughs> um, you've been quoted as saying, I am Monica Geller. We all know she's compulsively neat and tidy. Right. Yeah. Are you like that? Um, well, you know, sometimes you just start making things up after so many years of being asked, are you like Monica? So sometimes oh. I say, I'm exactly like Monica. And sometimes they say, I'm nothing like her. In Which way are you going to go today? Today, I think I'm going to go with, um, I'm not like Monica at all. I mean, not I've got even some... Even after a hard day on set, when you finally go home and you look at your own apartment and you see cushions, maybe, you just fluff them up fanatically. She already fluffed that pillow. Monica, you know, you already fluffed, but it's fine. <laughs> I take them and I throw them across the room, literally just... Well, you see my hotel room, I've wrecked it, yeah. Okay, well, I'm going to test you, okay? You ready? Can you close your eyes just for a second? Okay. But no cheating. <laughs> no cheating poo. All right. I'm not looking, I don't... I just don't... Okay, there we okay. go. Oh, good God! <laughs> Come on! That must make you stop. What about that? How do no, you No, like? I'm nothing like Monica. Come on, tension. No, you it's... want to straighten that out. No, I don't. Love that. No, it's fine, just like that. Okay, look, the top is just, it's agate. It's so close. It's so <sighs> close. He wants to. I feel really okay about it, though. You guys, um, I don't mean to be a pain about this, but um, I've noticed that some of you are just placing them on. You want to push the caps <laughs> until you hear them click. Come on, that pen must be really tempting. You look there. How about that? Man? Clinch you. I knew now it. I can do the interview. Now you can just relax. I can't relax because I've got problems with my shirt, but go ahead. It's okay. okay. They're good problems. You like them? <laughs> um, as time goes by, Ch Chandler seems to get more and more keen on Monica. Well, finally. Do, do you like Chandler? I mean, what do you, what do you think? I think Chandler is just as neurotic as Monica, so I just, um, they're, they're both out of their minds in certain ways, and they're both lonely, so. 
And I always kind of have the two so. of you paired together. I see you looking comfy in the armchair together sometimes. It's right. very comfy. Without being touchy-feely slimy. Right, right, right. It's yeah, we're all pretty comfortable. But I think that the beginning, um, I think they wanted Matt LeBlanc and my character to be together. You want some help with that? No, no thanks. I got it. Oh, no, I don't. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> okay? Yeah. Whew. Stood up too fast. Got a little head rush. <laughs> the heat. <clears throat> and and the humidity. <laughs> that's a uh, that's a tough combination. <laughs> so can you talk us through a typical day on the set of Friends? Typical day. Because we're um, not seeing it. So if you okay, the come to work and uh, say hi to everybody. Usually, nice big kisses for everyone. Because you are friends. Because we love each other. Come you know. on, really happens. Come oh, on. Really happens. Okay, what do we do? First thing we do is. Okay. Mm, 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 mm. okay. Okay. Right here, right now. Look at that. That's the first thing we do. That's the first thing, is it? That's first thing. But usually we, we'd actually do a little more. Anyway. <laughs> true. He's kind of wild. He's crazy. Um, is he? A, is he quite a loose cannon? No, he's not. He's actually. Um, he's just funny all the time. There's, it, he's a not, loose cannon. He's not inconsistent. He's just consistently funny. He's just funny. consistently funny. And great, and he's like, he's my bud. <laughs> what is the best single thing about being a friend? So if you have to do those, complete the following in not less than 12 words to win your holiday. I like being a friend because... I get paid to have fun. <laughs> the money, two. <laughs> two. Okay, here we go. Um, I've got a gift. This, nice. is, this is a limited edition of 12,000. And we've got one for you. It's a, a little cottage. Look at the spinach. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> diligently fashioned in in very good clay, um, and it's beautiful. It's going to look good it sitting atop. Anyway, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? And that's just a little slice of old England. How old is it? Um, oh, it's old. I can uh, tell. Before Christmas. I, I, I was actually so much. 20 months, yeah, at twelve ninety nine a month installments. I've been working up to it, and it finally arrived just in time. There it is. I don't know. I know. I, know. I, I think everyone around is. So, I'm going to cry. I better go. Thank you very much. I'm security here now to take me back to my room. Are you better at dealing with women in real life than Ross's? God, I hope so. Lisa, where, where are you? I'm sitting in the, um, on the set of the coffee house on the couch. That's not exactly what I meant. This could be a long day. Johnny. What, John, what is it? Uh, David Schwimmer's ready for you now. Now? Yeah. Okay. I'll just uh, straighten out a couple of things. Okay. David, Mr. Schwimmer. Oh, I've, but yeah. how'd you get out here? I've, I've managed to get out. It's okay. I can come out for the Security? Interview. No, it's okay. They, they all know. It's fine. Oh, okay. It's fine, yeah. How's it going? Yeah, not too bad. Good. Not too bad. Good. Um, they're going to give me a few minutes to talk to you. That's the good news. Oh, good. Are you enjoying yourself? Yeah. Okay, much, that's yeah. that bit. That's the warm up. <laughs> okay. Everyone else on the show thinks Ross is kind of the geeky character a little bit. Yes, absolutely. Although he wouldn't think that about himself necessarily. Absolutely not. Um, no. But do you ever yourself feel like kind of taking your character by the V neck and thinking, come on, be a bit more <laughs> brutal about uh, it? Yeah. I mean, I guess. Uh, yeah. I mean, over the course of the couple of years of doing the show, I mean, I think uh, we've been able to show a little more range of him. I mean, he's definitely got those strictly geek moments when he talks about, you know, dinosaurs. No, no, Homo habilis was erect. Australopithecus was never fully erect. Well, maybe he was nervous. <laughs> then there are those moments that he's Mr. He thinks he's Mr. Cool Guy. Sometimes, say if you've got the, you know, the build-up, say we had the, the, the build-up of sexual tension between him and Rachel, did you ever think, come on? Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I was like, uh, but, but I also enjoyed, wa you know, watching the stories develop and, and seeing, uh, and watching the tension develop and seeing, okay, what could possibly happen that will now keep them apart? Um, well, for a while now, I've been wanting to, um... Oh. Yes, yes. 
That's Look that's at right. That little girl. <laughs> what? <laughs> And then when we finally were together, um, to feel like the, the audience's investment in that moment of like our first kiss, mm. or, I mean, they were so behind us and everything, it was just, it was thrilling. It was really you see, great. I, I, I know that you know about, about drama and about how, why and how drama works. Yes. Did you worry ever the fact you now kissed Rachel and that had happened? That, that we that consummated was, the relationship? Yeah, yeah that, that actually, that was going to weaken the show in some way. I never thought it was going to weaken the show itself. I knew that, if anything, you know, it, it would take the tension out of, obviously, the, the courtship between the two of them. Um, but, of course, the writing being, I think, as strong as it is, they, they took it in another direction, finally had us, had me turn into, like, Mr. Insecure, jealous guy, had her kind of consumed with work, and then us eventually split. Uh, and, uh, and, and so then we're kind of, like, angry, with, and then we get to be cats and dogs fighting all the time. And, and I think I think the attraction and the tension is still there, and will continue to be there over over the years. So, uh, so you see what you did there. I, you did your humble thing there, and I love this. Is something I really want to try and learn from you. Okay. I want to learn to swim. To swim. Being. I want to learn to swim. <laughs> I want to. I, no, because sometimes I'm quite overbearing, quite loud. Yes, I've I, I, heard. I, I can't, and, and I could just take on board a little bit of that Ross humility. Give show me humble. How do I do that? Show you humble. Like the throat right? clearing. That's a. That's a <clears throat> Yeah, I, I, I couldn't possibly you know, show you. <laughs> so you sort of look down and... Uh, yeah, it's, I guess... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> you know <laughs> so you can just really The do thing it, is, though. honestly, like, to be perfectly honest, when I'm, like, uh, at a party or something with strangers in a big room, I am, like, I'm the most intensely shy guy. I'm not the guy that's, like, making all the jokes and, like, you know, the life of the party. I'm more comfortable when I'm with just friends or something, or buddies of mine, or, Do you mean just or girlfriends. friends, as in, oh, no, 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 you friends, know, like buddies, mates, okay, as ma you would mates. say. Okay, mates. You see you what go. you did, yeah. Uh, no, but if I'm not, if I'm, like, at an event or whatever, I'm, I'm really quite shy, and so, um... I'm no, a shy. Are you really? Yeah, but really? inside. <laughs> so outside, you're actually quite. Yeah, but it's all the same. It's just, it's yeah. a reaction. It's a lot of pain in there, isn't yeah, it? There is, yeah. yeah I heard. Hey, Ross. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Ross. You gotta get back in the game here, okay? The Rachel thing's not happening. Your ex-wife's a lesbian. You... <laughs> I don't think we need a third. <laughs> Are you better at dealing with women in real life than Ross is? God, I hope so. Um, Although, you know, no ring on my finger, so uh, there's got to be yeah, some, some problems there. I'd like to think uh, I'm as uh, the best qualities of Ross. I'd like to think I, I try to, inha you know, try to have myself. Uh, I, think he's, I think he's romantic. I think he's loyal. You know, I think he's a stand-up guy and he wants to do the right thing. He's a family man. I kind of identify with all those things. But at the same time, I think uh, he's, he's a little naive. You're the only character I understand the part was actually kind of written for you. You didn't have to audition, you're the man. Well, I, uh, yeah, I, I guess I had auditioned for the creators uh, a year prior to Friends uh, for a pilot that they had written. And I didn't get the part, but they, they remembered me and, uh, and my voice, and uh, I guess they, they told me later that they had written this part with me in mind, or my, you know, hearing me and seeing my mannerisms and stuff from that other audition, so. It's come so far, so. this show, hasn't it? Yeah. I mean, let's just take a look. If we can't come out here and have a look, just, just quickly out here. Yeah. Look, I mean, just look. We've got, look, one, two, two, a big church there, which we're not allowed to look at. We've got right. the end scene with the dining room. You've got five cameras here. It was huge. The biggest fear I had was that the show was about six losers, mm. you know, that are trying to get their lives together. And the more successful or perceived, you know, successful the six of us were, the harder it was, I think, to be, or it could be, to see the difference between us and our characters. And yeah. so when you're watching the yeah. show, all you would think of, oh, oh man, God. those guys have a Porsche. How sad are we? <laughs> yeah, I know. You know what? We're not sad. We're not sad. We're just not 21 anymore, you know? I'm 29 years old, damn it. And I want to sit in a comfortable chair and watch television and go to sleep at a reasonable hour. Yeah. Yeah, and I like to hang out in a quiet place where I could talk to my friends. Yeah. 
Yeah. And so what if I like to go home, throw on some Kenny G, and take a bath? <laughs> we're 29. We're not women. I know you're, you're, you're a literate man. I know you've got a production of The Idiot, Dostoevsky's classic running in Chicago. Right, right. That's where you're going right after this. I know this about you. Yeah. Um, so I think this is a great British poet, an unsung hero of poetry. Are you familiar with Pam Ayres? No, I'm not. That is, that, as it says there, it's with these hands, a collection of work. Wow, it's, it's a great photo of Pam. Pam, enjoy that. Thank you. Keep Thanks it so beside much. the toilet. What Treasure, can I, I what really... can you say? Where do you go? Who do you write to, you know? Oh. Wow. Buddies. Have we got it's a ritual good. handshake we can do? Something huh? American students. Yeah, right there. Guys. No, 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 it's a snap. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay, fine. All right. Okay, listen, I've got to go Thanks back up to my much. little room now. Okay. I'm well, going to go. Tell gonna, them not to I'm let me. I'm going to curl go. up with Pam. Okay. Enjoy it. It's dreadful. <laughs> Thanks. Have Will I have to be sexy at 60? Are you kidding me? <laughs> this is the book you gave me. <laughs> You're going to. Honestly, man. It's going to be nice. Excellent. Thank you very it's much. A real, it's a real. Do you know what? It's, a, it's what oh, I call it's a page poem. turner. It's a poem. Some more of my poems. You got to imagine me like a West Country action. Will I have to be sexy at 60? Will I have to keep trying so hard? That's rough. I like the, the roll of the R there. Yeah, it's rural. Well, I'm just going to slump with my dowager's hump and watch myself turn into lard. How about that? <sighs> David Trimmer reads Pam Ayres. She'll be, <laughs> she'll be delighted, you know. Not the only Excellent. airplay she's had in years. Yes. Finally. 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 Anyway, listen, Thanks. cheers. I've got to go back to my little room where they keep me. Thanks. OK, here's the coup. I've sneaked out of my dressing room because one member of the Friends cast, Lisa Kudrow, isn't here. She's on set in L.A. I've managed to get the number. Sadly, the, uh, the telephone in my dressing room, all international calls, barred. So I snuck out to this phone box and hopefully I'm going to be able to get through. There's the number. Oh, is that Lisa? Yeah. Hi, this is Johnny Ball from Channel 4. I'm down at the Friends set in London. Well, actually, I'm in a phone box outside because I couldn't make international calls from my dressing room. Ooh, your accent. <laughs> so where, where are you? Um, on the set of the coffee house on the couch. Oh, boy, it's not exactly what I meant. This could be a long day. Um, oh, I, I mean, I mean, why aren't you here in London? Oh, well, I can't be there because I'm pregnant. So, are they only filming you from the waist up, or have they cunningly kind of written it into Phoebe's storyline? Phoebe got pregnant. She got inseminated. Right. Her brother and his much older wife couldn't have kids, so she got implanted with some of their embryos. Hello, teeny embryos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm Phoebe Buffay. Hi. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm hoping to be your uterus for the next nine months. <laughs> Ah, very clever. Art imitating life. Lisa's pregnant, Phoebe's pregnant. I, I can't distinguish between me and Phoebe. <laughs> well, I tell you what, if that's the case, I'll make sure I'm never in the same room with you and a pair of scissors. <laughs> Would you relax? I know what I am doing. This is how he wears it. <laughs> how who wears it? Demi Moore. <laughs> Demi Moore is not a he. Well, he was a he in Arthur and in Den. <laughs> That's Dudley Moore. I said I wanted it like Demi Moore. Oh. Oh! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I'm sorry! Which one is Demi Moore? She's the actress! There was a disclosure in Decent Proposal Ghost? Oh, oh, she's got gorgeous hair. <laughs> Listen, I often get a bit overexcited, a bit stressed. Have you got any tips? Do you think I should maybe try and learn from Phoebe, her ability to let things go over her head, act a bit, you know, dizzy? It's a lot easier, you know, to live life that way. No one expects anything from you. So, so, so just let these two little irritations just kind of wash over me. Yeah, just play dumb. Great tip. Less stress because everyone thinks you're stupid. Great. Listen, I've got a bit of a pounder. It must be all that you know, the closeness of my dressing room. But I, I gather your dad's a headache expert. What do you think he would suggest? Because I've got a thumper. Um, if you can find a way to knock yourself out till it goes away. You know? <laughs> Bang your head against Bang. the wall. No, no, that's not what he would say, you know. What would he say? He'd probably say take an aspirin. Oh, well, thanks for the tip. <laughs> Talking of which, the cast, I've only got a day to bond. Have you got, have you got any tips for how I can make that? Well, 
I don't you know what you know what the best thing to do with any of the cast? Leave them alone. It's not gonna be that hard. Okay, um what about presents? I bought everyone a little something and you haven't been left out. I've got you a packet of, of the best guitar strings uh, money can buy. I'm pretty chuffed with my choice. I think you'll be... Well, I mean, yeah, Phoebe, I think, would really go bananas for it. I'm in the shower and I'm writing a song. Stop me if you've heard it. <laughs> my skin is soapy and my hair is wet. And Tegrin spelled backward is Nergit. I don't actually play guitar, I have a lot of interest in it, so. <laughs> um, Sorry. <laughs> is, there, is there anything else I can send you? Like hair clips, nappies, sort of mushy baby food? Oh, well, you know what you could send? I shouldn't say, well, why not? Yeah. I can't use it for a while, but, you know, like really good scotch. Oh. <laughs> okay, have you thought of any babies now? What about Johnny? No. Oh, how awk, that's your name, isn't it? What's, what's wrong with the name, Johnny? <laughs> Nothing it's common. Nothing. I think Phoebe suggested cougar. She thinks Johnny's no good. You know what I mean? Um, so, so, Lisa, is it, is it weird not being here? It's very weird. They're all doing something that I'm not, and that doesn't happen ever. Well, I wish you were here. Well, I need all the help I can get, quite frankly. Could, could you uh -huh. give me a call and tell them that I'm OK, that I'm quite a good person? You need to, Lisa. Oh, you need me? Well, just one more Oh, my God. All right. I'm sorry. Oh, but yeah, just no, one more right question. Now, it's not I'm even sorry. a whole yeah, question. No. More of a... To, I'm being called away. But we're getting on really um, well. You're scaring me. Okay, I gotta go. I'm scaring you. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, my God. Well, oh, safe to say I successfully freaked her out. She didn't even like the guitar strings. That's a wasted gesture. Excuse me, you don't want some guitar strings. Do you need guitar strings? Guitar strings are very good ones. Let's have a look. Why is it you, you always seem to end up naked on the show? I guess I'm the only one that's willing to do it. I love scenes with Ross. They're just great. You love scenes with Ross? I or love the scenes. love scenes with Ross? Friends is famous for its celebrity cameo appearances, and this English episode is no exception. It's packed with the likes of Jennifer Saunders, Tom Conti, and of course the queen of British sitcom, June Whitfield. You ready? Okay. <laughs> Who lives with Monica? Rachel. You didn't raise your arm? No, because Chandler was telling me. Oh, Chandler's right. Ross, I suppose. <laughs> okay, you ready? What job does Chandler oh, do? Chandler works in an office as a... A data processor. Data exactly processor. right, Jim. Yes, they do, data processor. Data processor, well no done. Hint. Okay. No hints, no hints. One each. This is the decider. Are you ready? Could you name Joey's seven sisters? Are they hills? Are they hills? Sorry, that's an English question. Oh, <laughs> can you name Joey's seven <laughs> sisters? Mary us. Angela, Angela Mary. <laughs> so, uh, no, I don't know them either. Just like, okay, oh, wow. and, uh, what kind of quiz was that? <laughs> That's just a quick quiz. Huh? It would have been oh, tedious. You can't. You can't. Okay. Go, uh, it wasn't in depth. You really yeah, wanted okay. like twenty questions. Yeah. Oh, okay. Salad. Salad. Okay. Okay. Set dressing. Yeah. So they've got food in front of them at this point. Okay? But they start, yeah. The, the dinner is... Oh, it's uh, so exciting. I'm actually getting just to hang out on set and just really enjoy myself and really see how it works. No one's really noticed I'm down here, so this is really good news. I like, see Jennifer Saunders... Oh, I can't believe it. It's just outrageous. It's outrageous. John, uh, Matt LeBlanc's ready for you now. Is he? Yeah. Brilliant. Thanks, Dan. Matt LeBlanc, what can you say? There's, there's always quite a sort of cutesy, almost, well, I don't want to say girly thing, but it's a girly vibe to the show, Friends. But Matt kind of represents that red-blooded, card-carrying male thing. He is Friends' very own Tower of Testosterone, and I'm about to meet him. You thirsty? Oh, you bet I am. <laughs> Okay, here's your penis. Matt, you work with three gorgeous women. Yeah. Yeah, how'd you keep it professional? 
Uh, well, they won't give it up, so I don't really have a choice. <laughs> you said you want to come in for some lemonade. So? Yeah. Ah. Were you just going to give me lemonade? Yeah! Why is it you, you always seem to end up naked on the show? I mean, there's a few times you end up, you know. Just... Yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that. I've been trying to figure that one out myself. Mm. I, I guess I'm the only one that's willing to do it. Yeah, all right. Where would you kind of, where would you draw the line? You know, at, where, when you're right at my waist. <laughs> do you have trouble actually keeping a straight face? I'm saying, you know, I see you yeah. work with with Matthew there, and you obviously both find each other funny. Um, but when you're actually doing it, and you're sort of doing a scene, and you know there's a moment so when you catch each other's eye and the, the reality can't help but slip through that you are two actors, and do you ever get kind of laughing? Yeah, yeah. Some, yeah. sometimes we, it's so hard, we'll blow like eight, ten takes in a row, you just can't stop laughing. To my best bud. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, best bud. <laughs> Put it on. Oh, now? <laughs> No, no, I think something this nice should be saved for a special occasion. Oh, no, no, that's the beauty part. It goes with everything. You put this on, you're good to go. <laughs> oh, man. You are so wearing that bracelet. <laughs> I so am. Oh, you have any idea what this will do for your sex life? Well, it'll probably slow it down at first, but once I get used to the extra weight, I'll be back on track. <laughs> The hard thing is we know when one another's gonna break, so if one of us starts laughing really hard, the other will yeah. start laughing really hard, and then it just sort of snowballs, and it's really tough mm -hmm. to get it back. Okay, buddy boy, here it is. You hide my clothes, I'm wearing everything you own. Oh, my God! That is so not the opposite of taking somebody's underwear! Look at me, I'm Chandler. Could I be wearing any more clothes? <laughs> Maybe if I wasn't going commando. Who comes up with expressions like, you know, you going commando on your fatigues and all this? And the expressions say going commando. Is that a friendism or is it an Americanism? Where, where does that uh, come from? Friendism being something that came down from the writers. From, from, yeah. Yeah, the writers, the the writers wrote that. that. That came down the first day. I, I love that. Joke. I love that. It's, it's funny, so isn't it? funny. But it sounds so right, and it sounds like you know when you when you do it, it really sounds like this is part of everyday America, but it's like mm -hmm. a known expression. But it's not. It's just yeah. friends' world. Well, that's the great thing. Our writing staff is all like young people, and they are so hip <laughs> and into in tune with coming up with things like mm. that. So they come up with some great stuff. Who makes you laugh more, Matthew Perry or the Duck? Ooh, tough. Yeah. Uh, probably Maddie, I would say. Begrudgingly. Only because he'll watch this. Yeah, right. Yeah, but it's really the duck. It's the duck. Could we be more white trash? <laughs> how, 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 how hard is it for you to play a bad actor? You know what I mean? When you're... <laughs> it's easy. <laughs> oh, here's my scene. Here's my scene. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. I'm Dr. Drake Ramore, your sister's neurosurgeon. Yeah, tell me, is she going to be all right? I'm afraid the situation is much more dire than we'd expected. Your sister is suffering from a... <laughs> a subcranial hematoma. Perhaps we can discuss this further over coffee. I've seen you teach the class and everything. Don't mm. upset the illusion. I've seen you teach it. You do it all. Mm. You don't tell me you... That was fun. I had a good time playing that one. What was it, what was it if, uh, if I have to cry? I just cut a hole in my pocket, take a pair of tweezers, and just start pulling. <laughs> Let's say I've just gotten bad news. Well, all I do there is try and divide 232 by 13. I know you're a big fan of DIY, yeah. In real life, I know you love DIY. Hey, hey, hey. So what happened? Did a forest tick you off? No. You know how we're always saying we need a place for the mail. Yeah? Well, I started building one. But then, 
I decided to take it to the next step. You're building a post office? No, an entertainment unit with a mail cubby built right in. It's a one-day job, Max. Okay. Power saw kind of got away from me there. <laughs> He's done him up a treat. And that is exactly the sort of incident you don't need. Here's some Ron Seal. It's a clear varnish, yeah? It's tough. OK, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. That's good, man. I don't get it. Deal. Matty! <laughs> Uh-oh, revenge for the Matthew Perry powder attack. This could be some Matt on Matt violence. He's got, oh. No. Still friends. John, um, just to let you know, Jennifer Aniston's uh, ready for you now. Jennifer Aniston? Yeah. OK, very exciting interview for me, this one. Jennifer Aniston, a woman who's inspired a million haircuts in women who perhaps lack the imagination to think up their own. Anyway, it's the last thing I'm going to talk about, her barnet. That's right out. No hair talk. As a TV presenter, mm -hmm. I, I have to wear makeup every day. Yeah. Every yeah. single day. And I'm finding light, powder, open pores, What's, what's really the thing to do? How do I clean up after a hard day with the makeup? Well, I do what they do. I'm not allowed to say this out loud, but I use soap and water. You just use soap that's and water? Not, they're not supposed to do that. You see, I've been told not to do that, because soap is scented, and that's, that's maybe a bad well, thing. Well, you got to get a face soap. OK, and then... Then you'll be fine. OK, so, so you've soaked it all off. Then... Soaked it off, and then you take a little seaweed stuff, and then you put the seaweed on, and then you do a little toner lotion, or this uh, seaweed... Um, mm -hmm. Cleanser, lotion, toner, whatever they call it. Okay. And then you put a little moisturizer and then moisturizer at the end. Okay. It's quite important to me. I've, I've never really known anyone else to ask because I can't really ask any of You have perfect what, skin, though. My friends. Well, it's good of you to say so, but you know. uh, I'll skip to the next question. Okay. Yeah, that was interesting. What do you enjoy doing the most when you see when you're looking through the script and you see something? It's like what generally makes you think. Yeah. Well, the scenes, I love scenes with Ross are just great, because they're always... You love scenes with Ross, or love the scene. love scenes with Ross? Big the difference. Scenes. <laughs> I know. A and verb, we haven't had really difference. any love scenes, truthfully. <laughs> um, no, the, scene, the scenes, because it's, I mean, it's a comedy, but they're, right, these writers are so wonderful that you can actually sort of, you have a bit of both. You have some emotional stuff that you get to sort of work with, and then, you know, also the comedy is great. Okay, bye. What? Oh, that is so sweet. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, okay. No, you hang up. No, you, okay, okay. One, two, three. Well, you didn't hang up either. She didn't hang up. <laughs> okay, no, no, you hang up. You, you, you. What amazed me about it, how you, you know, sometimes you act quite unlike yourself while always remaining the same character. It's quite weird. Sometimes you come up with a line which sort of, you sort of think, oh, I can almost imagine Chandler saying that, and yet it's still very you. It's quite yeah, weird. but we're, you know, that's what happens when you're friends. You yeah. kind of take on each other's little mannerisms and little sayings and stuff like that, so that's definitely happened. We've bled through each other a little bit. Well, yeah, I, I sometimes wonder, you know, when you're working together like that, you know, this whole life-imitating art thing. I know, it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, do you, do you find it weird when you're doing it? Well, there will, there will be um, a situation that will come up and we'll just say, God, this just happened, or God, how do you guys know that this is, or a poker episode, you know, we had been obsessed with playing poker for a while, and then they wrote like it in. You like poker? Yeah, I do. Couldn't be more out. Me too. Rachel. Um, I will see you, and I'll raise you. What do you say? You want to waste another buck? No, nope, not this time. So what'd you have? Mm -hmm, tell me. Come on, show them to me. No. Show them to me. Let me see. Show there. them. No. You know, I've had dates like this. <laughs> What's your poker face? That's it. <laughs> <laughs> good. Is that when you've got a good hand or you're bluffing? It's just That's the it. poker I'm not going to tell. Oh, my God. That'd be a bluffing face. You're obviously all great friends. Yeah. But do you get little squabbles? What? And what sort of things are normally little squabbles about? It's so weird because I, I want to. We don't really have squabbles. Let's not do this. Let go if you both stop. 
fine. Fine. There we go. Oh. Huh. You know what? If we were in prison, you guys would be like my bitches. <laughs> Well, you've been known to uh, froth the odd cappuccino between acting jobs. Froth? Mm -hmm. Well, just make the odd coffee. Yes. Yeah, you've done that. Are you, are you as bad a waitress as, as, uh, as, as, as Rachel is? Or are you quite, no, actually, I quite was good? a damn good waitress. Really? Yeah. I was a waitress, and I actually loved being a waitress. I loved yeah? being a waitress. What do you like about being a waitress? I just loved meeting people. I like yeah. that a lot. What about I, did spill, I did spill an occasional hamburger too. I worked in a hamburger joint, and I definitely. I worked in a hamburger joint. Did you really? Yeah, I cooked. I was a grill chef. Get for a out while. of here. Yeah, I did. Yeah. No, I didn't grill. I just served. You just served it. No. That was an easy job. Oh, Jesus! It's so intimate. It's <laughs> how about it? See, and then that happens every once in a while. But that really slightly got you going. What's that? What up? What up? <laughs> Okay, hold on. I think we're seeing quite a lot of this. Have you? Well, just there is an intimacy between you all. <laughs> there is. Physically. Look at, we have our entire... I haven't seen any of these guys yet. Hi! How are you? Hi. Welcome Hi. to London. Hi. In town for a couple of days. Oh, Thanks. how great to see you. Very cool. Say hi. hi to our camera crew. Hello. This is our just... wonderful camera crew. <laughs> they make it all possible. Oh! Oh! And our sound department. <laughs> Never forget sound. Never forget sound. Everyone so, does. I'm sorry, it's terrible. I know. Oops. Sorry. Oops. Sorry. Crazy trying to sabotage me. <laughs> hey, we're getting on this one here, look. We've got a whole new set thing. So you reckon you were quite a good waitress? I was a good waitress, yes. That was, that was very coquettish then. What was? Just that little movement there. Was it? Nice. Okay, who ordered what? Oh, I believe I had the half drunk cappuccino with the lipstick on the rim. <laughs> yes, and this with the cigarette butt in it, is that decaf? How'd you deal with Bolshe customers? Well, oh God, I, I, and I had a couple too. Not bad. Um, they scream at you too. Mm. And they just Especially really in America, scream. where they really expect good no, service. No, these were don't Europeans. They? Oh, they were Europeans. <laughs> they got mad because I, I got the order wrong. I gave them, I gave them like an Alpine burger as opposed to the bacon burger, I think, and really lost his shit. I mean, yeah, no, you can say that's fine. Really? Yeah. Shit. Okay, here's your present. You ready for this? Yeah. Okay, you're gonna really like this. What we've done is, look, this is some, um, this is from London Zoo, yeah. and you now. You, that's yours. You sponsored this. Look, dear Jennifer Aniston, welcome to the animal adoption scheme at London Zoo. So there's your letter Are of you introduction. Are kidding me? This and is mine? This is yours. There's your adoption certificate to say that London Zoo gratefully acknowledges that Jennifer Aniston has contributed to the... Well, we contributed for you, obviously, because that's the whole prezi. But you've got a, Sen it's a Senegal bush baby. I have a Senegal bush baby? I don't yeah. think I've ever seen one of these things before. No, but they're good, aren't they? How cute. Do you see that? I thought oh you'd like God. it. And you've got your magazine there. And look, in here, um, as well as that, you've got your... Um, it's like the nicest gift ever. You've got, look, you've got your oh bumper sticker God. in your car for London Zoo, the world's nicest zoo. And there's, there's a ticket in there. You get one free visit a year. And look, you've got your, your, your bear in a book bookmark. Thank you. It's bear in a book. So this little guy is, yeah, is at the zoo and, he, and he's, he's literally at the zoo. mine? Yeah, he's just yes, yours. Like if I wanted to take him home? No, you can't take him home. No, he has, has to, to stay at the, the zoo. zoo. It's, it's a money raising thing. Yeah, um, okay. Oh, right, okay. So there's your Senegal bush baby. And as I say, Senegal you get one. Bush baby. No, I can say that. Who can say they have a Senegal bush no, baby? No, you. That's who can say That's it. about it. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah. That is so nice. Thank okay, you. Okay, I hope you like that. Thank you. And obviously, I you like know, that very much. And any time you want to come, you obviously want someone to do a chaperone you around London Zoo, just give us a call. I'm always there, yeah? That's very sweet. top zoo chaperone. Thank you. Listen, I've got to thank go you. back to my secure room upstairs because I'm not allowed to, to very, walk around. Very so. famous human being. Okay, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for you. talking to me. Thank Cheers. Thank you. Thank Enjoy you. your, thank your you bush so baby. Thank you so much. Cheers. Take care. That's great. Thank you. Bye, Jennifer. Bye. Have a nice time thank in London. Thank you very much. I will do. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I got a bush baby. Oh, this is brilliant. I came to really see them work. After the last interview, they didn't know I was still here, so it's fantastic. Thank you. Uh, no, no, sorry. Okay, okay. You know what, guys, you're gonna have to stop rolling now. So, camera down. I'll let myself out. So there you have it. That was my day with friends and what friends they were. And do you know what? I've learned a lot. I've really got a lot to take home with me as well. From David Schwimmer, I've learned the art of humility. From Lisa Kudrow, I've learned not to get so annoyed at all those little things in life. From Courtney Cox, I've learned about tidiness and good order. From Matt LeBlanc, I've learned some of the tricks of the trade as far as acting is concerned. From Matt Perry, I've learned how to sit on some of those lines that just rotate round and round your head and are just dying to come out. And most importantly, from Jennifer Aniston, 
I've learned that it goes cleanser, toner, then moisturizer. <laughs> right, guys? They're going to be down here about, well, a couple of minutes now, but don't, uh, don't tell the papers. <laughs> Excellent, OK. Get me. Oh, Terminal, please. 